I work as a freelance stage manager for touring theater companies. On Sunday, April 2nd, 2006, I was traveling from Northumberland to Weston Supermare for a show the following day. The show was a children's pantomime, which was on tour of the UK. There were seven people in all involved in the show, and we were all traveling together in a large van with a crew compartment and separate storage hold for all of the scenery and technical equipment. We traveled through heavy rain for most of the journey, and after six hours of driving, we pulled into a service station to change drivers. By now we were on the M5 motorway in the Midlands heading south on the last leg of the journey. Just after rejoining the motorway, the driver reached 70 miles per hour and pulled out to overtake a car in front of us. As we crossed the lanes, a heavy gust of wind caught the side of the van and we started to swerve across the road with the driver fighting to regain control. The van swerved across all three lanes and then rolled over onto its side. I remember seeing the road spinning as we turned over and it was almost like we were watching an episode of Casualty, only this episode, I was in it. Then everything went silent for a moment and everything seemed to be in slow motion. The next thing I knew, I heard the terrible sound of the windows smashing right in front of my face and the sound of tearing metal as the van skidded on its side down the motorway, still traveling very fast. The screeching and tearing sound was followed by an overpowering burning smell and we eventually came to a stop amazingly without hitting anything else. As we lay there on our side, we realized that the van could be on fire and we had to get out somehow. The van was lying on its side and all the passenger doors were blocked. The only way out was to climb up through the driver's door, which was now on our roof. We all clambered up to the door one after another and jumped down onto the motorway. Everyone escaped uninjured and most got out without a scratch. When we looked back at the van from the side of the road, it became apparent just how amazing this was as the van was torn to shreds and there was debris all over the motorway. Our personal belongings, which were in the crew compartment with us, were strewn across the carriageway. Most incredibly, I remember the glass shattering in my face and being centimeters from the road's surface as we skidded along on our side. I felt my face and was amazed I couldn't feel any blood. When the ambulance and police arrived on the scene, they couldn't believe that we had escaped from the wreckage unharmed either. As we all sat in the ambulance together, it began to dawn on us exactly what we had all just been through. The tour went ahead with a new van and damaged equipment replaced, and in the best traditions of the theater, the show must go on. We all had a tale to tell that we would remember for the rest of our lives, but for me the story was just beginning. When I arrived home after the tour, I felt strongly that I was protected somehow during the crash and knew that I should have died. How my face escaped from being torn to shreds by the glass in the road surface, I will never know. One day while thinking about the crash and just sitting at my desk, I looked at my pen on the desk. Almost instantly it moved all by itself. I thought I must have imagined it, but it did it again. For the next few days, objects would move as if controlled by some invisible force. I had experienced psychic encounters before, but nothing like this. I wonder if I could control the movement and set about experimenting with various objects. I found that I could move small objects by looking and concentrating on them. As I learned more about my new ability, I learned its name, telekinesis, and learned that it is very rare. I am now learning to develop my abilities and feel that it is the beginning of a whole new journey for me. I believe that the crash awakened this ability in me and that I now have a new purpose in life. I also believe that I was spared death for a reason and see each new day for the wonder that it truly is. I am continuing to study my new gift and hope one day that I will understand its full purpose. 
but I do know one thing. My life will never be the same. It happened on March 20th, 2005, at 1 in the morning. It happened at Henry County General Hospital in Paris, Tennessee. I was at home in bed and awoke just after midnight with what I thought at first was heartburn. I got up and went to my bathroom and saw myself in the mirror and I was a gray color. I then became very nauseous and vomited into my bathroom sink. My chest pains were getting worse and worse, and then I was pretty sure I might be having a heart attack. I was only 40 years old, but have a strong history of heart disease in my family and have lost many close relatives to heart attacks. Having just lost my health insurance, all I could think of was how I was going to be paying the medical bills from this heart attack. I had worked all my life to buy my home and land, and worried as I drove myself to the hospital I might lose my home for medical bills. I drove myself to the hospital instead of calling an ambulance because I didn't know how I would pay the ambulance bill. I made it to the ER where they immediately took me in and hooked me up to an EKG, and the doctor told me, Mr. Beckham, you are indeed having a heart attack. I replied, Yes, I think I am. And then instantly I was in a different place. Not the hospital, but a beautiful, peaceful place, and I felt the opposite of pain. I felt euphoria. I was bathed in a warm white light, and standing there with me was my aunt Gaitha Barnhill, who had died the previous year of cancer. She was my dad's baby sister, and we were very close. Cancer had ravaged her body, and when she died, she didn't even look like herself. But now, she looked so beautiful, and she glowed as if she were radiated. She didn't speak. Rather, she communicated with me anyway. I could just read her mind and know what she was telling me. She pointed to an image, something I can only describe as a huge billboard or photo of a man, and I understood this man was God. Previously to this, I was an atheist. She pointed to this image and I knew she knew I understood what she was telling me. That God is real, and He is in control, and He loved me. Then the next moment, I was back in the hospital, but in a shell, that shell being my body. I had no feeling whatsoever, and it was like I was an observer in this, not a participant. I could hear everything the doctors and nurses were saying. I could see my chest rise and fall as the nurse squeezed a bag pushing air into me, and I was aware another nurse was giving me CPR, but I couldn't feel anything, and apparently had no pain medication to this point. Then I heard a nurse say, He's back, and immediately the agonizing pain was back too. The pain was so bad it shot through my body like lightning, and it was unstoppable. No matter how much I begged for pain relief, they wouldn't give me anything for fear it would put me back into cardiac arrest. They were vigilant, however, and I'm so grateful to them and all who helped me through, but I know it was God who sent me back. I often wonder why I was allowed to see the image of God and not Him in person like I saw my aunt in person but I've come to realize that it's only for him to know, as I'm not capable of thinking or reasoning on such a superior level as his. On July 19, 2005, on my brother's birthday, I was in a car accident. When I woke up that morning, I knew something was not going to be right. I knew something bad was going to happen, but I got into the truck anyway. Something told me not to, but I didn't follow that feeling. I still wish to this day I had. I went off Highway 20 in Ukiah, California, above the Cayenne Campground's north boat ramp at Lake Mendocino. We were found off the road 150 feet, wedged between two trees. We had been going 55 miles an hour, and the impact was hard. 
The driver had been up all night previously fishing at the Russian River. Being a parolee at the time, he was worried about being caught for doing things wrong. There were five people in his truck, two in the back and three of us in front. My fiancé Tom had just gotten out of the hospital with his back the night before. We could not find his seatbelt that morning and I felt there must have been a reason why. Maybe it was so he could save my life. The driver's name was Tiny. He drove a blue early 80s Ford 250 truck with a guard rail on the front. As he drove to Ukiah, things were going well until he realized he left his cell phone behind, so he turned around to head back to Lake Mendocino, and he fell asleep at the wheel. We weren't quite all the way there when I felt the truck go down the embankment. Just seconds before this happened, I had a premonition I was going to be in a car accident. Sure enough, that's what happened. It was a scary experience to have lived through. California Highway Patrol said we were lucky to be alive and he didn't know how we survived that wreck. As I woke up screaming my head off, Oh my god, Tiny, we went off the road. I heard a voice say, Now is not your time to die. My life flashed before my eyes, and that second I thought it was all over. I would be leaving my boys behind for good. At that second we hit the tree. My head went forward and Tom braced himself in front of me in the dashboard. I felt like guardian angels or my deceased relatives were there to save my life. I had seen them with my own eyes. I thought that that was it when we hit the tree. I saw my cousins Ray Jean and my great-grandfather Julius Stevens, whom I never met, and many more. I felt their energy around me. I was close to seeing the light we all see before we die. I thought of my boys, and that brought me back to reality. Everything missed the dashboard but my left knee. I felt nothing but gratitude to Tom for saving my life and my family helping me to stay or have the strength to live. I've never come up with how I knew it would happen or how I managed to walk away with my life, but I can tell you it was near death for me. Nightmares followed for months afterward, and sometimes they still surface near the anniversary of the experience. My psychic abilities have doubled since then. However, it's an experience I do not wish to repeat. The lesson I did learn is not to take life for granted because life is short. Having that near-death experience made me aware of my life and how short it can be. My strange experience happened on August 17, 2001 in my residence in a village here in the Philippines. I had eaten a heavy dinner that particular night and I dozed off to sleep afterward. I felt a very peaceful, heavy sleep that I have not experienced in my entire life. It felt as if I was falling in a very deep, slumbering, swaying, invisible energy, so peaceful and so reassuring. Deep, deep down, a very restful place. Suddenly, I heard a loud voice in my inner consciousness, not audible to anyone but me. Shout out loud and don't sleep. Wake up. I refused to obey the command because the deep sleep was more reassuring and brought me to a happy state that I have been searching all my life. Then suddenly I saw my spirit or soul body, I'm not so sure, stand up and walk away from my physical body, which I was still lying very still in bed. I groped in the dark, and passed through walls to the television room where my husband was watching the late news. I pounded on the door, but my hand penetrated the walls as if it was made of jelly. The command was now louder, and it commanded me to shout and wake up. With my last remaining energy, I woke up screaming and moaning. My solar spirit body came back to my physical body in such a strong impact that I felt a heavy, dizzy feeling in my head. I am sure that it was a near-death experience that happened to me, 
and I was given a second chance to be alive again because my mission is not yet fulfilled in my life here on earth. This is a story related to my mother by my grandfather after heart surgery. It was a private experience to him and so was not broadcast to the entire family. My grandfather was a colonel in the army during World War II and was thus entitled to veterans benefits receiving his medical care at the Oak Knoll Naval Base in Oakland, California. After a heart attack in the mid-80s, he received a bypass surgery at the base's medical center. As he reported to my mother, he died during the surgery. He didn't experience a tunnel of light, but he did float upward out of his body to the ceiling. He said that his nose was to the ceiling and he could see the texture up close. He wanted to turn around to see what the doctors were doing, but he didn't know how. He became very frustrated with his inability to control his spirit body. However, he listened intently to everything the doctors were saying. At some point he was back in his physical body, and when he awoke he told the doctors, I died, didn't I? They were surprised that he knew that, and answered in the affirmative. He then repeated to them the content of their conversations during his death, and they again confirmed his accuracy. I was not told about this until years after my grandfather passed away. I know he was a good and religious man all of his life, so no change in that respect was noticeable. However, he did begin to urgently get his temporal affairs in order, making arrangements for his eventual passing. It was as if he knew his remaining time was short. On a related note, the night my grandmother passed, as she lay in bed with my mother sitting beside her, she sat up, staring at a corner of the room with her arms outstretched and calling my grandfather's name. She eventually calmed down and fell asleep. My mother left the room for a short while, and when she returned, my grandmother was gone. It seems my grandfather came to greet his wife when it was time for them to be reunited. It was September of 2008 when my experience happened. I was at my home in Leeds, West Yorkshire in the UK, which I share with my fiancé Paul. It was about afternoon time and I got very upset about a personal matter and... As I have asthma, my getting upset was worsening it. I was in the bathroom and had been feeling a little sick when my asthma started to get worse. I began feeling lightheaded and my breathing became shallow. My fiancé ran to the living room and retrieved my bag with my asthma pumps in it. When he brought them to me, I tried to use them, but I was beginning to get even worse, to the point of lying on the bathroom floor and almost passing out. At that point, I thought it was the end for me. I thought about my little girl, who I'd been pregnant with eight years ago, and sadly, it resulted in a stillbirth. I also thought of my grandfather, who passed away when I was about three or four years old. I remembered the way he looked and how he smelled of pipe tobacco when I suddenly felt a warmness near me. I could faintly hear Paul calling my name, and when I looked up, there was my grandfather, exactly the way I remembered him. He smiled gently at me, and I heard his voice say, Hello, Blossom. That was his pet name for me when I was younger. Beside him was the cutest little eight-year-old girl, my daughter, whom I had named Courtney. She smiled also and said, Hi, Mummy. After what seemed like hours, but could only have been minutes, my grandfather said, You shouldn't be here. It's not your time yet. You must go back. Then I felt warm, strong arms gently push me back. My daughter said goodbye, and then my fiancé's voice became clearer, still repeating my name. I finally came around, shivering and sobbing. I told my fiancé what I had seen, and he said that my grandfather was obviously looking out after me. 
on checking my asthma pumps. They were months out of date, therefore they would not have worked. My grandfather, my daughter and my fiancé had unknowingly worked together to bring me back to life. Even to this day, I can never forget seeing my beautiful daughter, knowing she was safe with my grandfather. I'll never forget how wonderful I felt and how warming and loving that experience had been. My fiancé has had psychic experiences in the past, and since my experience with my guardian angels, I too have become more open-minded to the psychic realm. And now I know who will be greeting me when I finally pass on into the other world.